So I'm going to start by getting my R Studio set up for class. I'm going to, just like I showed you in the previous videos, I'm going to start a new R script. I'm going to save as. I'm going to save this file in my folder that has the data files for class today. I'm going to give the file a name. Um, tutorial. And then I'm going to go up to session, set my working directory to source file location. All right, that has my R script created. It is saved in the folder with my data. And that means that when I type in the file names for my data, R knows where to look for it. We're going to start today by loading up a package. The package we're going to load first today is ggplot. This is ggplot2. This is a package that makes pretty graphs. And now I'm going to run the, this line of code. Down in my console, you can see that my library loaded and there weren't any errors. Uh, if you got an error, it means that you forgot to install uh, ggplot2. Assuming that we all now have ggplot installed, let's load the data for today. So I'm going to store that data in uh, an object called daily. I'm going to use the function read.csv, which is a function that takes a CSV file, which is the format that our file is in, and imports it into R as a data frame. If you have set up your working directories correctly, uh, what you can do is just type in the beginning of the file and then press the tab key. If there is only one option that fits what you started, it will just autocomplete. If there are more than one options, it'll pop up a, a handy box like this. We're looking for this one right here that I've highlighted 2001 to 2006. We're going to add a little command called string as factors. Oops. Let me get that on the same line so you can see string as factors equals false. We're doing strings as factors equals false because otherwise R will import text data as if it's a fact. And we don't want that because it, it takes the text that we're looking at and recodes it in a, in a way that will make it really hard to work with. So often you will want to use the string as factors equals false when you are importing data into R. So I'm going to hit run. Look down in the console, there are no errors there. Look over in the environment window off to the right and you will see that you now have under the header data, you have something called daily. And if we click on daily, we can inspect our data file. And so this is how R is now seeing our data. It has automatically imported our headers and then it has imported a date field here and air temperature from a weather station. The data that we have here is a subset of NEON's weather data. This is coming from the Harvard Forest NEON site. Uh, and I've subsetted it uh, for the purposes of this class. Usually in class, somebody says their date doesn't look like this. And so please inspect your file closely at this point to make sure that the format looks exactly like you see on the screen. If it doesn't, I can guarantee you to open the file in Excel after you downloaded it, and then you let Excel save the file. When that happens, Excel reformats your date. If your date looks different from what you see on the screen, you need to go download the, the file again, don't open it in Excel, and then repeat all the steps that we've just walked through. Let's go back to our R script file. Let's see what the computer thinks that the dates in that file are. So I'm going to type in class. That's a command that's asking R to tell me what it thinks something is. So we're going to ask it what it thinks in my data frame daily, what the column date is. I'm going to run that line. And down in the console window, you can see that it says it thinks it's a character. And as far as the computer goes, character data is character data. These could be species names, places, and so it will treat it just like any other character data that you give it. So let's think about the kind of challenges that might arise if we work with dates as if they were just another alphabetical name of some sort. 
The first thing I'm going to do is have our print in the console window the first few rows of date information so that we can both see what R really, how R is really seeing the data without all the fancy formatting from R Studio. The first thing I'm going to do is print out in the console window the first few entries in that date column from our data file. And I'm going to do that by typing in head, which is a command for asking for the first few rows of a data frame or a vector or something like that. So head, and then I'm going to give it specifically what I want the first few rows of. And that's from our daily data frame. And in particular, that date column in the daily data frame. And so I'm going to run that. So this is a list of the first six dates that are currently at the top of our data frame. What I'm going to do now is tell R to sort that data frame by that date column and see how that affects the order in which it uh, gives me those dates back. Taking daily. Type in daily again to tell it what data frame we want sorted. Give it the command to order. And then I need to tell it what column I want the sorting to use. And in this case, this is the date column. And then put a comma in, because that's the format that it needs. And I'm running it. No errors, which is good. And now I'm going to repeat that command to show me the top few rows of the date column in the daily data frame. So daily and date. And nothing changed which is unsurprising because of the specific date format that I gave you for this data file. And so if you look closely at this date format, I'm going to highlight one down here, you see that it is, starts with a four digit year, a dash, the month, a dash, a day. And that is a very specific date format called the ISO International Date Format. And one of the nice benefits of this date format is that even when the computer thinks it, that this date is a character, it will still sort it the way that we as human beings would want these dates to be sorted, which is from earliest to latest. This is not necessarily the case if we put the dates in a different format. So why don't we show that? I'm going to create a new set of data. I'm going to call them random dates. And I'm going to create just a new vector a list uh, to store them in. And let's start. Let's say we do sampling every year, but every year the day we sample is one day earlier than we did the year before. So let's say we started our sampling on the 15th in 2015. And then the next year we did it on 14th of 2016. And then the following year, we did it on the 13th of 2017. If we wanted to have these sorted in a way that, that makes sense to us from the earliest date to the latest date, then we want them in the order that I have just typed them, 2015 being the earliest date and 2017 being the latest date. But when we sort these, the computer doesn't know that they're dates. So let's see what happens when we sort this. So I'm going to just make random dates. And then because this is a list and not a data frame, we're going to use a different command to sort our dates. Give it the sort command and then just give it random dates. Let's run this. And now let's look at what the computer thinks it did. And so you'll see that it did not sort these in chronological order. It sorted them as we would expect alphanumeric data to be sorted, where it went through one of these entries and compared it to another entry. They were the same, they were the same, they were the same, they were the same. Ah, three comes before four, and then it got sorted. This completely alters the way that the computer is going to organize information in your files, and it is not the way that you want dates sorted. In our next snippet, we're going to start working with the data and exploring why the computer not understanding something a date can cause us major problems.